Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to do a good example of how to calculate the work done in an adiabatic process. In this case, we're doing a compression in a diesel engine. And what's happening here is this is a, a cylinder in a diesel engine. It starts out with an initial volume of a half a liter, uh, atmospheric pressure, and temperature 20 degrees centigrade. So basically, the valve is opened up, air is taken in at atmospheric pressure, and then the valve is closed, the piston comes down, and the volume is compressed to 1 15th of its original volume. So what's happening here is we're going from a state where we have pressure equal to one atmosphere, uh, the volume at this point, this would be volume one, which is 0 0.5 liters, and we're compressing it to a state where it's 1 15th, volume two is equal to 1 15th, the initial volume. That's called the compression ratio. It's compressed to 1 15th its original volume. And we're supposed to find the work done in that process. And remember, for an adiabatic process, uh, we can say that the change in internal energy is equal to Q minus W. Of course, that's for any process because that's the first law of thermodynamics. But what I was trying to say is that for adiabatic processes, Q is equal to zero. So this goes to zero. And we have delta U is equal to minus W, or W is equal to minus delta U. Of course, delta U is the change in the internal energy of the gas. And of course, in an adiabatic process, all the energy to do the work comes from the internal energy of the gas. Now in this case, since we're compressing the gas, uh, the work done of course always is the area underneath the curve, but since we're going from right to left, the work done will be a negative quantity. We're actually adding energy to the gas by compressing it, and therefore that is negative work done because work done by the gas is negative because actually we're doing work on the gas. But remember the equation for delta U, that is equal to minus N, of course the minus is not part of the equation, that's part of the equation in here, but it's N times C sub V times the change in the temperature, which is T2 minus T1. And you can see then that all we need to know is how many, how many moles of gas we have in the cylinder. We need to know C sub V for a diatomic gas, because of course air is diatomic, and we know to, need to know the end and the beginning temperature. Now we do know the beginning temperature, but we don't know the end temperature. And we don't know the number of moles, at least not yet. But we do realize how big it is, we know the pressure, we know the temperature, so we can actually say this, that the number of moles is equal to the amount of volume that we have here, which is 0 0.5, divided by the volume that air takes, or any gas takes up, at STP conditions, which is 22.4 liters. Of course, that would be at STP conditions, but since the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade instead of zero degrees centigrade, then there would be, the gas would be expanded somewhat, there would actually be a little bit less gas in there, so we have to multiply this times 273 divided by 293 to compensate for the difference in the temperature from STP. So that will tell us how many moles of gas that we have, so let's figure that out. 0.5 divided by 22.4, at STB conditions times 273 divided by 293 and we have uh, the number of moles n is equal to 0 0.0208 moles. That's close enough for our accuracy right here. Alright, so now we have the number of moles in that cylinder that we're compressing. Uh, we know C sub V, well let me figure out in a moment what C sub V is. So C sub for, for a diatomic molecule, diatomic uh, C sub V is equal to 5 over 2R. Remember, for a monatomic, it's 3 over 2R. For a diatomic, it's 5 over 2R. So we also know C sub V. We know T1, the initial temperature, 293. How do you find T2, the final temperature? Well, for that, we need the equation that says that T1 V1 to the gamma minus 1 equals T2 V2 to the gamma minus 1. Remember that equation that we figured out in a previous video? That was the relationship between temperature and volume in an adiabatic process. So we need to know T2, so we're going to solve that equation for T2. So T2 is equal to T1 times volume 1 divided by volume 2 to the gamma minus 1 power. Notice that I put volume 2 down here, so I have V1 over V2, and then gamma minus 1 is of course the exponent for both, so we can write it like that, and we have T1 on the other side, and then we flip the equation around. So that's how we find out what T2 is, the only thing is we need to find out what gamma is. And for a diatomic molecule, 
gamma is equal to C sub P over C sub V, which is a diatomic molecule is 7 over 2R divided by 5 over 2R, which is 7 over 5, because the R's cancel out and the 2's cancel out, and so this is equal to 1.4. If we then plug that into our equation here, 1.4 minus 1, so this is equal to T1, 293 Kelvin, multiply it times V1 over V2. Now V1 is 15 times as big as V2, so that ratio is 15 to 1 or 15. And gamma minus 1, gamma is 1.4, minus 1 is to the 0 0.4 power. So that will give us the temperature when the gas is compressed. So we have 293, 293 uh, times 15 raised to the 0.4 power, and that gives us 865.6 Kelvin, 65.6 Kelvin. So that's the temperature after the gas is compressed. So not only do you compress the gas, or not you, but the engine, compress the gas to 115 to the original volume, the temperature goes quite high in a diesel engine when you compress it. This is the compression stroke. All right, now we are ready to plug that in here and get the work done. So this is equal to minus N. N, we said, was 0 0.0. 208 moles. C sub V is uh, 5 over 2 times R, and R would be 8.31 joules per mole times Kelvin. Multiply times T2. 865. Yeah, 6 Kelvin minus T1, which started at 293 Kelvin. There you go. That will give us the work done by this process. All right, so this minus 293 multiplied times 8.31, multiplied times 2.5, multiplied times 0 0.0208 equals. And we have minus 247 joules. Why minus? Well, the gas is being compressed. The gas can only do work when it expands. When it compresses, we're doing work on the gas, so therefore the answer is negative. And it's 247 joules of work to compress the gas to 1 15th of its original volume. And that's how you solve an adiabatic uh, problem like that, trying to find the work in an adiabatic process. Uh, where we're going to use the temperature to get that accomplished. In the next video, we'll use the pressure and the volume and to see and we'll see if we get the same answer then.